This video is not meant to accuse, but to inform the public. This is all just information I have found online that I'm putting into a video. Also, a trigger warning. I'm going to be talking about sexual harassment and assault, and also murder and death of a teenager, so please take care of yourself if those are hard topics for you. You don't scare me, but you should feel me. The sun is setting, don't trust your hearing. Born in Mexico on April 20th, 1991, Jacqueline Abundez had brown eyes and very dark brown hair. Jacqueline and her mother, Angela Mendoza, moved to the United States by the time Jacqueline was a teenager. She went to school in Sunnyside, Washington for some time, and then Grandview, Washington as well. In 2006, when Jacqueline was 15, she started working as an agricultural worker at Evans Fruit in Sunnyside, Washington, with her mother and brother. Evans Fruit was known as one of the largest apple producers in the country at the time, with the Sunnyside branch being the second largest orchard in the company. Jacqueline and her family were still new to the area and had come specifically because there was work for the next few months for them, with the abundant agriculture around them in central Washington. Angela, Jacqueline's mother, had worked at Evans Fruit for a couple of seasons before she brought her teenage children with her, expecting to work near each other as a family. However, on the very first day of work, the foreman separated them all instead, and that did not sit right with Jacqueline's mother. On July 4, 2008, two years later, a family was taking a walk around the fields in Sunnyside when their young nephew discovered a body laying face down in the irrigation canal. The body was of a young Latina woman in her late teens or early 20s and was wearing jean shorts and a black t-shirt. She also had on some jewelry that was shown to the public with hopes to identify her. The autopsy results stated that it was definitely a homicide, as the body was found with a shotgun wound to the midsection. A few days later, the body was identified as that of Jacqueline Abundes. She was 17 years old. At the time of recording, I could not find an official police list of suspects. However, there is one person I honestly can't believe isn't already locked up if not for murder, at the very least, one of his other crimes. Juan Marin had been the foreman and manager of the Sunnyside branch of Evans Fruit since 1981. Being a foreman, he had to be available at all hours, so he had a house on the property that he lived in. He was also a landlord for some of his workers, and he was apparently not everyone's favorite boss. In fact, he was especially hated by most of his employees. Some employees even said that they were threatened with violence if Marin didn't get his way. Workers said he abused his authority, charging kickbacks for jobs at Evans Fruit or collecting utility payments for company housing and then apparently pocketing the cash. He also had a reputation for condoning a sexualized workplace. Some workers said that he personally harassed both the men and women who worked for him and that there was a remote place in the orchard that he called La Joita or the Little Jewel where he supposedly took women for sex. In August of 2006, Jacqueline, who was only 15 at the time, filed a sexual harassment report to the EEOC, or the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, against her boss, Juan Marin. This report was dismissed, despite a witness testimony by a former tractor driver at the company stating that, that Juan pinned her between tree branches and said loudly enough for bystanders to hear that despite her young age, she could already endure the stick. November that same year, after the first one was dismissed, Jacqueline's mother Angela filed another claim stating what happened to her daughter, as well as an incident where Juan had said, give me your daughter, I'll marry her and I'll have her give birth every year to a son or daughter year after year. Since neither Jacqueline or her mother went directly to Evans Fruit about the allegations, they heard about it from the EEOC. The EEOC had told the company about these allegations from the same women twice now. And instead of firing him, they sent Juan Marin a warning letter, stating that they didn't have time or the energy to continue dealing with the problems you are bringing down on us, and that he would be terminated if it happened again. Not long after this warning, another person came out to the EEOC and said that Marin would give raises and material possessions to women if they gave him sexual favors. An anonymous letter was sent to Evans Fruit sometime late in 2007, 
with more allegations against Marin. And then a few months later, Marin is still working there and they receive a fourth sexual harassment complaint from the EEOC. There are dozens of other sexual harassment allegations against Juan Marin, stating that he would grope women and do other unspeakable things with his power. Even though there are so many allegations from so many different women at this point, Evans Fruit claimed they saw no physical evidence that proved this, so Juan kept his job. He was not reprimanded at all. Two years after Jacqueline was murdered, the women at Evans Fruit had finally had enough and a bunch of women started to come forward altogether. They and the EEOC began a lawsuit against Juan Marin and Evans Fruit. Jacqueline and her mother were the spark these women needed to speak their truth and get justice. Not all of the victims came forward, as they were afraid of Marin and what he would do to them if they spoke out. Rumors had started to circulate that he had gotten rid of someone who had tried to stop him from doing what he was doing. Word about this women's movement between the workers began, and finally Juan was fired in 2010 during the investigation against these allegations. However, the reasons he was fired had nothing to do with the investigation. In fact, on July 23, 2010, the employer sent a letter to Juan Marin, advising of his termination, stating the termination was the result of an investigation into the misuse of company time cards and the allegation that company resources were used to compensate employees for work on properties owned by him. One worker even alleged that when he refused to pay his rent, Juan shut off the power where he was staying. He had also created a number of fake employees so that he could collect extra paychecks, effectively stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from Evans Fruit. This man was mad with power. According to court documents, there was a meeting held in February 2010 with the EEOC and some of the women speaking out against Juan Marin. Jacqueline's mother Angela was present. Juan allegedly sent his own people to the meeting to spy on and possibly intimidate some of these women into not speaking out. In these documents, it was concluded that there was still retaliation happening at the company even though Juan was no longer working there, still trying to silence his victims from afar. This could also be looked at from the point that Juan liked to scare his workers into doing his bidding. There were a lot of rumors among the staff that he had something to do with a murder, and some of the sexual harassment allegations included threats to kill the families of the girls he was harassing. It was also alleged that Juan Marin provided illegal drugs and other substances to his workers as well. The thing about this case, and especially relating to the original allegations made by Jacqueline in 2006, is that since there was so much talk about the rumored murder committed by Marin, this part of the investigation was actually dismissed as hearsay. This case did not actually go to court until 2013, and despite the fact that they started it, Jacqueline and her mother's statements were not included in the case because of Jacqueline's murder. So regardless of whether they're all speaking the truth or not, because they were all talking about it with no proof, it was said that it was simply a rumor and dismissed in court. The court proceeding was filled with victim-blaming cross-examination from Evans Fruits lawyers, but finally the case was settled in 2016 when the company finally decided to pay damages to the victims. This makes me so mad because it's so obvious something was going on here and nothing was done about it for literal years. As for Jacqueline's murder, unfortunately at the time of recording, it has still not been solved. Angela still has no closure to her daughter's death that happened way too soon. If you have any information about this, please reach out to authorities at 509-574-2500. Like and subscribe if you want more videos like this, and follow me on Twitter if you want. Links are also in the description for sources I use for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.